As I was saying, the truth has to be lived with. Was I saying that? Well, that's point, one of the points I was making. To so hear the truth, then you've got to live with it. And it may cause pain. That pain may need to be felt. Anything you feel, you should embrace with love. Even if it's negative feelings from others. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily embrace negative feelings. But, um, yes, everything has to be felt. So allow it all. Um, if someone is attacking you or sending nasty thoughts towards you or rage or hate, the best way to respond is with love. And in, in all circumstances, it is the best way to respond. But we're not always capable of responding with love. But to increase your capacity to love is good all round. And it's the only thing really you can ever do for yourself, truly. Because your soul will grow in love. And it's your soul which is everlasting. And God isn't going to leave behind any souls, no matter how long it takes. The earth will no longer have on it people who can be corrupted by dark spirits. So the dark spirits will have to continue where they are in the spirit world, unable to visit the earth plane. But any of those spirits hearing this, you don't have to take the long, you don't have to learn the hard way. Try, experiment, Accept that God is a being, is an entity, is your mother and father. Experiment with that. Your current belief has been wrong. Experiment and see what you feel. Because inevitably, eventually, God will get, God will get you. He, she won't leave anyone behind. But it could take another 40,000 years. <sighs> to believe that you can be happy. To believe that it's just up and up and up. You know. Some of you aren't babies, you've been around a long time, but all of us alive now are babies in the beginning of an eternal life. This is the nursery, this is the infancy stage, this is just us getting to experience something And to know our souls are powerful, unique children of God. And it's your souls which is dominant. And the souls which is creating the events of today. Which is God's plan. You learn... You learn to feel. The longer you 
resist feeling, the harder it is to make that first step. For those people still alive, your bodies contain the genetic code from your ancestors. Along with that is the injuries they've also picked up. So when you're you, in your waking hours, you're not just your own soul. You are the the picture of the world thus far. And it has been getting better mostly, except some extremes. That's my feeling at this present time. And God is going to shake the earth. God is going to rid it of evil. And we will then live in a world where the animals won't attack each other because we do not have that feeling of hunting. The animals reflect us. We have dominion over this world. And it will happen. And the world will elevate itself, its state, in levels of love. The world will be a more beautiful, more comfortable, <laughs> loving, beautiful place. I say beautiful. Yeah. And we will <laughs> be more loving to ourselves and others, knowing more about what we are and knowing we're here to to experience and learn to be loving and we will all have had our experience of feeling the negative emotions because they are part of our soul too but in feeling them and knowing that I prefer not to and do things that are going to create more positive emotions to understand that and to bring our children up knowing that their true mother and father is God and not us and we are their brothers and sisters yet we will guide them in the ways of knowing the physical <laughs> world so that they can experience a beautiful life and this is what will happen and this has been God's plan and we are at the end the end of our dependence upon ourselves it has run its course infant souls trying to teach infant souls the way hasn't worked and in today's world to be heartless is predominantly the way to get the most money and as money is the main force in the world we've kind of 
taken a, a bad path. Democracy and power of the people doesn't work because the leaders become corrupt. Power corrupts. And it corrupts because we're born with injuries from our ancestors in our beliefs. And your belief system affects everything. And when you get your belief system in line with God's belief system, you feel it. It feels good. And from then on, on that particular topic, when you start to sway off it again, it feels bad. And you want to stay on the truth because it feels good. And that's how you stay on the path. It's all about feeling because the soul is feeling and that's what we're wanting to progress. And when you're feeling a negative emotion, you know you're fixing something in your soul which is eternal. How could you possibly do anything more productive than that? And you feel that at the time. You feel this is the main thing. And how do you do it? You sit there and do nothing. In this world where we, let's say, don't eat the most natural things, inhale the most natural things, there are, I believe, tools to help us be able to sit there and do nothing. And cannabis is definitely one of these. In doing so, and letting go, what comes is what you need to know. And as long as you're prepared to face it, you will progress. The first time is going to feel odd, strange, scary. But know that God loves you, God is all loving. And God wouldn't allow, God wouldn't make a system that would kill you or anything. Just think, you're just sitting there. How can anything bad happen? If you went all lightheaded and fainted, or if you're sitting on the floor, all that's going to happen is going to fall on the floor or slouch forward. So don't allow fear. And just allow anything. I meant to continue, don't allow fear to stop you. Feel fear. It's only a feeling. You may have cooked it up to be something over a long period of time. Created a big thing about it. A blockage. In that you may even created some sort of facade to get you around this blockage denial now it's hard to explain and perhaps the person who's gone into it the most put the most effort into it to try and explain it and done a pretty good job, I'd say, very thorough, is A.J. Miller, the Australian, who was Jesus, and 
has been existing for over 2,000 years, or 2,000 years, yeah, over 2,000 years. And has a lot of memories from his time in the spirit world. And, and his purpose here was to come bring the truth. So, um, it's Divine Truth channel on YouTube. You can hear a lot of his seminars and things. And, you know, on any subject many subjects but he um, his knowledge didn't differ very much apart from a couple of minor particulars from when he was first doing his videos 2007 pretty much up until now He, uh, he doesn't seem to have been able to get another download of information in this time. And um, for whatever reason, I can't be 100% sure. Hmm. But it seems as though expecting the Jesus coming back is to expect the second coming, the Messiah. Messiah coming. And um, it's possible that there's somebody else and it does say in Revelations that it would have a new name so when the Bible is saying about and I will come again is it God that was with Jesus saying I will come again and this time God comes in another person even though Jesus came back reincarnated, God comes back in another person. And has God done this quite perhaps every thousand years, every two thousand years? Has God done this throughout history? And in the Gita, Krishna, who's apparently God in a body, says that he does this. Um, and I have been getting the feelings that that was me so not that I'm God like the Krishna one but more like as with Jesus God cleared me of injuries so that I would develop to be how one with God and um, although I've many times over the last year or so now nearly felt God, understood things through the feelings with God, learnt some lessons, developed, be more sensitive to the feelings interpret different different feelings the male part of God the female part of God other spirit influence feeling love self love loving others loving God Loving your enemies, <laughs> the power of that is powerful. 
and um, that's what I've been doing. Now, what more I can do, I don't know, and I will only find out day by day, which is the way I want to find out. Um, I've got some hard shit to do, I think. <laughs> I think it's going to take some amount of tribulation for me to um, improve. Because I still smoke and cigarettes as well, tobacco. I'm still craving sugary foods. Coffee a lot, I want but don't always have and thinking of lovely ladies I still do that <laughs> and there's a desire to to be with a woman I have that not all the time but it's you know it's ups and downs and I think you know like I've got to go through some downy bits, which I'm not, you know, you're not keen at that stage, are you? But out out of that usually comes, you know, moving up again, which is, which is, which is good. You know, this is life, and this is what I mean. You you choose to love. That's the answer. Choose to love, but it's not always so easy. And um, recently, sometimes I like going into ignorance. It just gives me, it just gives me that bit of pause to just allow me to be ignorant for a while. Um, as a breather, I guess. There's quite intense ramifications of being open-minded to this belief that I've felt lately <laughs> long-winded um, but at, at this point I'm in my mind I'm I'm lead runner for the role and I've got to I've got to live it for a bit and I've got to get off cannabis for a bit and live that see how that feels get some dreams yeah but um, if, if I am then I also need to do something towards that preparing for that because I'm I'm, I am happy to be that one who has the responsibility of leading humanity once the once the tribulation is over. I am um, also confident that um, everything I've learnt and felt over the last year or so has has been true and is and working true and it's hopeful and it's good and that um, it really is true, you know the. The first will be last, and the last will be first. There's a real dignity in the people who have suffered, and they have uh, things are going to switch for them, you know. Like the day turns into night, and the night turns into day. It's it's going to be like that. 
So, um, if you're loving the earthly life now, like loads, then it's going to switch. And if you're struggling now, things are going to switch. And just remember, whether you're in a body that's doomed, and or whether you're in a body that's saved, your souls are mostly innocent of what your physical body has led you to do. But you are responsible, in a sense, for witnessing it. So you would have to feel some remorse for the situation and just be true to you, which you can't help anyway. <laughs> and you're true to your soul as much as you can and should be. The way things have, once things have happened, that's what they were meant to be. And God deals with us all individually. He, she has that ability. He, she has that capacity. And it's all good. It's all fine. Just don't be too fixated on the body when it's the soul, which is the main thing. And there is compensation for those who suffer hardship. Well, for these injuries we're innocent of are lifted when we sleep and when we die. And I've said that already. So now I'm repeating myself. And it's been long enough. So, you're my brother and sisters. And I've had. I've had help, right? So, in a sense, I have admiration for all of you for living with and putting up with these age-old injuries. And I guess that I am in service to you. This is my calling. So, I'm going to send you some love. I'm going to face an interesting year. We should be seeing something quite amazing in the sky. Oh no, I'm just realising it's dawn. <laughs> we should be seeing something quite amazing in the sky in, by December 2015. Perhaps feeling effects of it sooner than that. I'm sure I've been feeling some gravity effects. So I was driving around, sometimes going down a hill. The car would usually pick up quite a bit of speed. And then there were these times where it just didn't very much and there just seemed to be a difference. And then sometimes uphill, I was rolling uphill and not slowing down with my foot off the accelerator. Weird. And, um, yeah, so we might be feeling the effects of that. And then... Um, we're going to be in no doubt by March, April, May, June 2016. 
and hopefully by then I'll have progressed a little more and managed to give up smoking tobacco and my last <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> okay. Ciao.